Today we're going to look at eight important limits. I've included the graphs to help our intuition a bit further. So the first most simplest limit is the limit as x approaches a of c is equal to c. So this is a horizontal line. And this basically means as x approaches some constant a of another constant like y equals minus 2 in this example will equal that constant minus 2. Now this makes sense if it's a horizontal line because any x value you pick, so 2 or 100, of a number will just equal that number because for every x value you have the exact same y value because it's a horizontal line. So that's quite intuitive. So let's go on to the next example with our reciprocal function 1 over x. So first of all, it says the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, positive means from the right, of 1 over x is equal to infinity. So we look at the graph, 0 at the origin, as x comes from the right, okay, we can see that the limit tends to infinity along the vertical asymptote x equals naught, which it never touches. And the same thing holds for the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, negative means from the left, of 1 over x equals negative infinity. So coming from the left, x approaches 0, we can see the y value and the limit, the same thing, approaches negative infinity along the same vertical asymptote. Then the limit as x approaches infinity this time of 1 over x is 0. So x approaches infinity, meaning it comes that way. We can see that the limit eventually will go to 0 at infinity. The next is the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over x equals 0. So x is approaching negative infinity going to the left and we can see that also equals zero. So let's go on to the next example. We have the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x is equal to the limit of x approaches zero of the function x over sine x, and that's equal to one. So that's quite interesting. So the graph of sine x over x, we can see has this nice curve, and as x approaches 0 at this point, we can see the limit is equal to 1, that's the y value. And here is the function x over sine x, we can see as x approaches 0 from either side, the limit is 1 as well, so that makes sense. Now let's go on to, uh, yeah, let's go on to these ones. So for cosine x minus 1 over x, we have the limit as x approaches 0 is 0. So as x approaches 0 from either side, so from the left to the right, we can see that the function is discontinuous. One goes up to infinity, one goes down to negative infinity. So it's undefined. So we put a 0. Now we're going to look at the function 1 plus 1 over x all to the power of x. So it says as the limit as x approaches infinity of this function is equal to e, which is the exponential constant, which is approximately equal to 2.718. So we can see this as x approaches infinity, so it's going to the right, we can see that the limit gets closer to 2.5 in, the, in this graph. It goes extends to the right a lot more. We can see that it will end up at 2.718 recurring. So uh, that's my favourite one because the exponential constant as a limit is pretty cool. So we just go back to um, one of our functions we had. It said that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of x over sine x is equal to 1. 
Now, if we chug and plug, or plug and chug, <laughs> it doesn't really matter which way you say it, uh, zero into this function, we use our calculator, we get that you have sine of zero divided by zero. Now that's an error. So how do we come to one then? I mean, if you do the same thing with that, we get x is zero divided by the sine of x, which is zero, we get the same thing. So how do we come about this? The easiest method is used L'Hopital's rule, which means you take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. So let's do that. So the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So it's going to be equal to cosine x over the derivative of x, which is 1. Now, if you plug and chug, we get that the cosine of 0 divided by 1 is 1, and that's what you get there. That's exactly the same as the limit as x approaches 0 of x over sine x. If you differentiate x, we get 1. If we differentiate sine x, we get cosine x, which is also 1, if we put 0 into that function. So let's take another function. It was that the limit, I'll just show you. It says that the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x minus 1 over x is also 0. So the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x minus 1 divided by x is equal to 0. If we put 0 into this function, we get the cosine of 0 minus 1 divided by 0. Oh look, another math error. So, let's do the same thing. Differentiate the numerator by the denominator. So, we get that f prime x is equal to the derivative of cosine x, which is minus sine x, minus the derivative of 1, which is 0, so you can forget about that. The derivative of x is 1. So now, if we put 0 into this function, we get the minus sine of 0, all divided by 1, should give us 0. And there you have it. So there are eight very important limits that you should memorise, and I hope to see you in the next video.